Ich gehe zum Brotmaschinen für einen Millimeter Produktionsunternehmen. Wir haben eine tolle Zeit gehabt. Wir haben in den Schloss Neuschwanstein gesehen. Neuschwanstein. Wir brauchen etwas, das die anderen nicht so einfach imitieren können. Genau. In previous videos, I've seen so many interesting comments. A few of them are kind of mean, yeah, but many of them are very nice, actually. I appreciate that so, so much. Every single comment you make, every single opinion, I really value that and I have learned a lot from it. Some of them have given very useful information I did not know before. And there's actually so many positive things I've learned from your comments. From your comments, I did not know, for instance, about the Kartoffelbrot, the Eigenpositionsspinne, or that you can get vaccinated against the TVE, for instance. From that, I also learned that the Lyme disease and TVE disease are different. I thought it was the same, but actually they are different. So you can get vaccinated against the TVE, but not against the Lyme disease. There used to be a vaccine against the Lyme disease, but it seemed that it was not effective enough. So now actually the best way to protect yourself against Lyme disease is to wear protective clothing, cover yourself, and check yourself very well that you don't have any tick or any weird thing on your body, on your skin, especially after being in those risky areas. So yes, I have learned so much and not just useful information, but also I learned a few things about the German language. It's like I got the opportunity to practice it uh, when I have to write and type all of the stuff I want to say in German as well and in English. It's a very great exercise for me and I like it a lot. And that's why I want to share with you now. Yes, I have chosen nine German long words that I found either too difficult to pronounce or too long. Maybe some of these words I heard them before, but I do not use them by myself that much. And I would like to. That's something that makes the German language a lot, a lot more interesting. Don't you think? The first five words come actually from the German Red video and the first one is very interesting to me. Maybe because thanks to that word and especially to the comment made related to that word, I'm not gonna make the same mistake again. And that's a mistake of saying Schneiderbrot instead of Brotschneider. I knew it was actually Brotschneider, but I think in part of the video I just said Schneiderbrot. I don't know, I got confused. Uh, sometimes I actually get confused with some German words with special order. Sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm not really sure what the order is. Schneiderbrot. Nein, Brotschneider. Ah, Brotschneider. Schneiderbrot. Brotschneider. Schneiderbrot. Brotschneider. Genau. Um, Schneiderbrot, oh, Brot Schneider. So in this video I said Schneiderbrot and later on I realized about the mistake. So that's why I wrote Brot Schneider very, very clearly. However, one day I got a special comment. It's not a Schneiderbrot, it's a Brot Schneider machine. Okay, so apparently Brot Schneider was also wrong. It's a Brot Schneider machine. For me, that was like a very, very long word. And I think just saying Brotschneider is enough, like you get the message, you know what it means. But then I look at some other comments, especially from German people, my dear Germans, of course, and they would all write Brotschneider machine in their messages. They would never write Brotschneider. So talking about this specific comment, it's the uh, Brot Schneider machine, not uh, Schneiderbrot. I kind of explained that I would get confused sometimes with the order of some German words. So I got a little challenge as an answer. Brot Schneider machine Reinigungsmittel Produktionsunternehmen. Wow, what a long word. Is that even a word nowadays? Maybe many years ago, but now. I even looked it up on the internet, but I did not really find that much. I could not even find a text or a single place where I could see this single word at once. 
So I'm not really sure if it's still used. Maybe before, but it's too long. Brotschneider, Maschinen, Freilichungs, Mitteln, Produktions, Unternehmen. Six Wörter. Six words. Six words that actually cluster into one word. What? The meaning is actually easy. If you think about it, yeah, Brotschneider, Maschinen, Reinigungs, Mittel, Produktions, Unternehmen. Actually, long German words are just a cluster from two or more words. So it's easy because you just have to know the meaning for each word and then it makes sense. It's not that difficult. Brotschneider, Maschine. Mm -hmm. Infektionsschutzgesetz. Mm -hmm. Not that hard. The difficult part is saying these difficult words. Some of them are okay, yeah, Brotschneider Maschine, after you practice it a few times, it's fine. But many other long German words make writing and speaking so, so complicated. Why does it have to be so complicated? Like... Ich gehe zum Brotmaschinen Reinigung mit der Produktionsunternehmen. Bis später! So why don't you just leave these words separate like in different languages? It would be a lot a lot easier. It would make more sense to me and a lot easier for speaking and writing. Like especially if you're learning German, you do not really want to use these long words that often. It kind of like blocks you and stops you like you're speaking fluently and then comes a difficult long word and you're like uh, um, yeah, I think it's a bit difficult. Why? We brauchen eine Differenzierung. Etwas, das Deutschland von anderen Ländern und Sprachen unterscheidet. Aber das schon, oder? Mit dem Küsschen, das Bier, das Festival gewählt, oder? Ja, wir brauchen etwas, das die anderen nicht so einfach imitieren können. Ach ja, genau. Another word is Zuckerrüben Syrup. I'm not really sure if I say it right. I haven't heard it that much. Um, but it's a new word to me. Falls du es noch nicht probiert haben solltest, Pumpernickel bestrichen mit Kräuterfrischkäse und Zuckerrüben Syrup. Gottlich. So I did not really know this word before. I knew Mermelade, Butter, Nutella, Honig and so was everything you can put in the bread. But Zuckerrüben Syrup. Zuckerrüben Syrup. Zucker, Zuckerrüben Syrup. <laughs> oh God. Uh -huh. Zuckerrüben Syrup. It's actually sugar based syrup. I'm actually more familiar with maple syrup, especially for pancakes. I do really love them, but the taste might be similar. I'll definitely try it out. Verniedlichungsform. Is that how you say it? For me, it's more like Verkleinerungsform. Verkleinerungsform is a lot easier for me to say it. Um, Verniedlichungsform. Not that much. I haven't heard it before that much, that's why. But I like it even more than Verkleinerung's form. Brötchen is the Verniedlichung's form von Brot. Es ist also the gleiche Wurstam. In der deutschen Sprache ist das Anhängen von Chin eine gebräuliche Art, etwas in einer kleineren Ausführung zu beschreiben. Well, I did not really know this word before. But I like it so much because it reminds me of Niedlich, cute in English, which I use a lot. I find it a bit difficult to pronounce it though, for Niedlichungsform. Brötchen is the Verniedlichungsform von Brot. Yeah, a bit more practice, then it gets better. The next word I want to mention is Sonnenblumenkernbrot. It's a word I even used in my video. Well, I used a similar word, Sonnenblumenkernbrötchen. The difference that you could notice is Brot and Brötchen, as you could notice, right? 
But honestly, I have practiced so much before saying it right. Sun and Bloom and Kieran Gretchen. Sun and Sun and Bloom and Kieran Broad. Sun and <sighs> I still have some trouble with it. Sometimes, especially if I'm just saying something casually and randomly, and then I have to say this word, I get kind of blocked. Ich wollte Kartoffelbrot kaufen. Es gab aber nur Blumenkehl. Ich wollte Kartoffelbrot kaufen. Es gab aber nur so ein Blumenkernbrot. The next word is Eichenpositionsspinne. Das ist eigentlich schon mal kommen von dem Video über Nature in Germany. And I had really no idea about this word. I had never, never heard about it before. But it's something that's really good to learn about and also to learn how dangerous it is. When you go to the forest, there's dangerous areas and dangerous animals you really have to be aware of. And that's one of them. I have procession spine. See, I still have to read it in order to know exactly how I'm gonna say it. Not that easy. I have procession spine. I don't really know how common it is, if people really use it that often, but people definitely use this word. I also found it on the internet. This other word is very, very common. I also mentioned it in the video about nature in Germany, and it's very, very common, so popular. And even though it's so popular, I'm plenty sure that most people not Germans, of course. Germans say that perfect. But for most people, it's actually very, very difficult to say, to pronounce. No Schwanstein. Now it's okay, but in the beginning, I also had no idea how to say this word. I would see it and I would recognize it. I'm like, yeah, I know what they're talking about. I know where that is. Um, I've been there before, but I did not really know exactly how to say it. Yeah, I went to Neuschwanstein. Now I think I get it right, but I had practiced it so, so many times before till I got it finally right. And sometimes when I'm speaking fast and I really have to mention it, I really have to think twice about it. We haven't had a tolle Zeit gehabt, we haven't had the Neuschwanstein gesehen. Neuschwanstein. It's actually not that bad. I would say just try it out and just say how you think it is. It's gonna be fine. People will understand it. If you take word for word, it's a lot easier to understand. So Neu, Schwan, Stein. Now all together. Neu, Schwan, Stein. Not that bad, right? Now the next word is about my last video about Christmas in Germany. Um, I did not really mention this word, but I showed a small video about it. About how people put sugar in it and then light it on fire. And that word is Feuersambole. I absolutely love this word because it reminds me so much from Christmas time, from the Christmas markets, from the winter time here in Germany. And I also think it's so, so cool having a drink on fire. I love it. So in the beginning, I was told to say just like Feuersangenbulle because it would be quicker. So maybe many Germans say it that way or maybe it was just the explanation I got so I would be able to say the word. So that's why I still say just like Feuersangenbulle. But if you really look at the word, it's more like Feuersangenbulle. Feuersangenbulle. I say it like Feuersangenbulle. So for this word, I'm very curious. Dear Germans, how do you say it? Feuersambole, Feuersangenbole, or maybe in a different way? Please let me know in the comments below. I would really like to know. Maybe I'm saying it right. Ich möchte ein Feuersambole. The last word I want to talk about is Staatsangehörigkeit. This word is not really mentioned in any of my videos. I just chose it because it's still so complicated to me. Like, I still do not get it. I cannot say it right. Staatsangehörigkeit. I don't know. I still think like there, there's something I do not say right. Maybe it's just practice, right? 
So here in Germany, I get to see these words a lot, but I do not really hear it that much. It's not like people do say this word that often. Um, I think it's more like for official documents, for official procedures, for legal matters. So it's not that friends, family or just random people are going to have a conversation with you and they're going to ask you like Welche Staatsangehörigkeit hast du? They mostly ask like Wo kommst du her? Was machst du denn hier? So I think that usually in the daily life it's not like you're going to use this word. That's why I haven't got to practice it that much. I think so. But I got to use it a lot sometimes, especially with visa related matters. And I still have trouble saying it. Stadt Angehörigkeit. That's like Hörigkeit. Stadt Angehörigkeit. Well, maybe I say it right. Maybe I still have to practice a bit more. But, well, what's important is that people understand me. So, do you really get what I say if I say it? Stadt Angehörigkeit. Just saying it as a single word is a bit difficult and if you're saying it in a whole phrase or just like when you're saying something randomly, it's a lot, a lot more complicated. Ich muss meine Staatsangehörigkeit in das Formular antrag. Easy. So, well, those are words that I really wanted to share with you. I really like learning about all of these new words and new things about the uh, German culture, uh, general information and about the German language as well. Like through your comments and through these videos I have been able to learn so much and I'm so happy about that. So thank you so much for all of your comments and contributions in my videos. And if you have any suggestion, correction or maybe just an opinion about anything related to this video, to this topic feel more than welcome to write it down below. Hope you found information here interesting and useful somehow. And if you like this video, please thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe as well. So I wish you all a very nice day and see you next time.